Hello everybody, this is Debo with Debo's Film Reviews, and this week's review will be The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, starring Jimmy Stewart as Rance Stoddard, Vera Miles as Halley, Woody Strode as Pompey, and Lee Marvin as the titular Liberty Valance. Directed by John Ford, also featuring Trevor Martin, Denver, Denver Powell, Lee Van Cleef, Edmund O'Brien as Dutton Peabody, and Andy Devine, who was a freaking collaborator with John Ford, same with Wayne. And, and Miles. I'd say, great movie for 62. I mean, a downright epic. I mean, an excellent story of where it was like the now senator, Ransom Stoddard, coming home to bury his friend, Tom Donovan, who, well, later on, were not close later on, but at the beginning of the movie, Donovan saves Ransom's lives after, After his stagecoach got robbed by the Valance gang. And. And just so happens. He, he gets taken in by this. By this woman in Holly. And her family. And then. Then she. Befriends him. And. Sets out. Um, Rance Stoddard sets out to. To clean up the town, but in a what, in a way that besides, much to Donovan's chagrin, was was do it without, by use of law books instead of a gun. Try to bring some law and order to the West and all. And I guess like Lee Marvin played a damn good villain, especially. In this one, I mean, it's kind of like no, no villain, villain kind of deserved it like Valance did. And one flaw in this was how they didn't weren't able to get the all of that was from scheduling and recording contracts and all. But if they were remake the movie, they could at least put the fit, put the song in the soundtrack. Because from although there was a lot of songs from movies that didn't make the soundtrack and were later separate, like this Man Shot Liberty Valance, the Gene Pitney song was one of them. Like how Johnny Cash did a song for Thunderball and the Sons of Katie Elder, which never one made made their said films. But I'll save that for. Review on Katie Elder and watch the Funner of All review for the rest on that editorial. And a lot of excellent side characters too, with Andy Devine as as Link Appleyard, who was basically like a, a bumbling, bumbling marshal. I mean, just basically, he was more comic relief in the movie. And Western, that's more dramatic because, because, like, because somehow. The only person to ever get shot in a movie was Liberty Violence. Although there were some beatings and such, but. <coughs> and. Which, some epic takedowns of, like at the beginning with a stagecoach ro robbery. And I was like, Lee Marvin, Strover Marvin Martin, and Lee Van Cleef played some damn good outlaws. And a lot of side characters like how like with Button Peabody played by Edmund O'Brien and then you had Den the guy play who Denver Powell played. Played in and Woody Strode as Pompey. And then you got the ultra badass Tom Donovan who's played by the Duke, of course. And I gotta say He played the ultimate sacrifice to protect a friend. I mean, just... He... 
I mean, our Stoddard was played by Stewart was building a school, working the newspaper, and try to be like the first representative for Shinbone. The town, that is. And I got a good little scene or that scene with a little excellent that scene with John Carradine monologue about about the campaign rival, Bug Langhorn, who was voting to keep it territorial for the cattle barons and all. Compared to Stoddard who wanted to bring it bring statehood and law and order and and such. Because that's following the relationship from of Donovan to, to Stoddard. You know, it started out the friends later became estranged after after Wayne sac took the sacrifice and took the took and really and he was the one who really shot Valance. Sorry for the spoiler, but hey, that's my ch that's what you get with my channel. Sorry, sorry for that, but back to the movie. And now you got with, uh, with that kind of one was almost levels of one of it was which was one of Wayne's most iconic roles. Matter of fact. So iconic, it inspired a hundred impressions because this is about the only movie in its filmography where John Wayne actually used the word pilgrim. Because like, because the whole movie was like, pilgrim, you got to learn how to handle a gun, pilgrim. And I got a little bit of a funny scene for, for an ultra serious movie as this, which was one where he, where he took, Takes where Donovan takes daughter to his to his farm and then or ranch and then tells him to put these paint cans on a on these posts and then and then Donovan just shoots them and then one hits and he just you know there's some dead center and then one get one of them cans gets all over over ranch's suit and oof. And then the whole deal in the bar scene where they were turning into a political convention and trying to get nominees nominated like with Stoddard and Peabody. And then Valance tried to get in there and then only his two lackeys would vote for him. And then, and, oof. But, but a great movie. And quotable too, like with Wayne's use of Pilgrim and and the newspaper editor at the beginning of the movie, because this movie is basically just one big flashback followed by a flashback within a flashback, which was the flashback within a flash within a flashback was when was that was him replaying the the death of Lovely Valance, but from Donovan's point of view, where he was. Hiding in the shadows in a, with his Winchester, while everybody fought that. That was Stoddard with a with a pistol, making everybody. Or should I say, Stoddard made everybody think it was Stoddard with his, with a six shooter, compared to Valance and his six shooter and his and his whip or stick or all. Cause they all because Valence only used a handle. <coughs> but overall, a definite five out of five masterpiece. I mean, a must watch for fans of old westerns or John Wayne, Jamie Stewart, Jim Stewart, or J James Stewart, is what I meant to say. Period. Because some of the best thing, both best one of the best things that both of them have done. And they've always made good acting chemistry in the three films they, they did together, but two of which only had scenes together, which Larry Valance and The Shootist were the only two movies that Wayne and Stewart basically had, had screen time together. 
Although there was originally with Lonesome, rumor has it that Lonesome Dove was actually was the book Nelson Dove was really a screenplay, which was meant for them to be doing that. But that's I'm going to say that for no review. But overall, Man Who Shot Blue Valance, epic movie, epic song. And I gotta say, if they ever remake them, I already made that point, but I'm gonna say it again, if they ever remake the movie, at least gotta get a decent country artist like Willie to cover the song this time around. And I gotta say, if they ever remake it, it ought to be like Josh Brolin will make a perfect Tom Jonathan and Eli Atwell is Hallie and not sure who who would place who would make a good ransom starter, but but hey, internet, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be some guy named Chris would be a good candidate. Be it would be Evans, Pratt, or Hensworth or Pine. But yeah, I'm gonna say, say all that because because you know westerns and remakes don't won't it's about the one one genre that they won't touch when it, in the age of reboots. And ironically, the one that actually gets remake remakes actually been done right on. But overall, I'm gonna rest my case as a man shot Liberty Valance, an excellent five out of five. Great movie, and a great quote at the end of the scene: "When the legend becomes fact, Brent the legend." All right, y'all, uh, that was Devo's film reviews for the week, and I'll be back, keep dishing out the reviews for the year.